What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Game Show. My name is AJ Gels. How y'all doing? It is time once more for the weekly show. Man, it feels good saying that again. Uh, we really we've taken the last couple weeks off the show just because I was finishing up some E3 stuff while I was also doing other stuff in my life. Um, you know, got a new job. Hooray, hooray! All uh, all excited uh, about that. I just finished my uh, my first couple days. Uh, in the actual, you know, actual job, finished training, finished orientation, all that stuff. Uh, got out onto the floor of the casino. If you didn't know, I'm working at a casino. I'm a, I'm a blackjack dealer now. Um, you know, did my first couple days. A um, lot of fun. It's kind of why the the um, just recordings have been really light the last couple days, just because I haven't had a lot of time to record. Slash, um, I guess it would be yesterday now because it's technically just past midnight on Monday. Um, I slept all day. <laughs> My back is killing me. Mostly, it's it's just I got to get used to you know standing there and doing all this at the table. Um, but it, the biggest thing is I had trouble talking yesterday. If if you can tell, my voice is a well. I'm not sure if you can tell if, or if everything's coming across clear. My voice is a little messed up right now. Um, I had some really heavy smokers <laughs> at my table on uh, on. It, I don't know. The days are all really fucked up because I work from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. So my days are really weird right now. Um, but I had some really heavy smokers in my last day before um, I have a couple days off now, um, who were just blowing smoke in my face all night. So I caught it, you know, like a few really good, like big facefuls of cigarette smoke, um, and I just I got to get used to that again. So, <clears throat> excuse me if I if my voice is a little weirder than normal. Um, that's what's up. But either way, you didn't come here to listen to me talk about my new job. You came here to we talk about video games. Uh, honestly, again, I haven't done the show in a few in a few weeks. It's kind of nice being back with it. Uh, if you're new to the program, basically what we do, we sit here, we uh, we talk about video games. Sometimes we'll watch videos. A lot of times, we'll uh, pretty much every show we watch article or we read articles. Some shows we watch videos. Actually, I do have a small video um, at the end of the show recommended to me by uh, Chris Eternal uh, over on Twitter. Uh, he's also a YouTube subscriber. Subscriber, um, we're going to be taking a look at a trailer for an uh, honestly a game coming up in a few days coming out on PlayStation. Uh, something I'd not even heard of, and I give him big credit and big thanks uh, for bringing this game to my attention. It looks neat. Haven't seen I haven't seen the trailer yet. I'm going to kind of experience it for the first time with you guys, but it sounds interesting. So. Uh, where was I going with this? All right, for yeah, new people watching. But yeah, basically this show is just we sit here, we read news, and um, you know I give my opinions. You know I always encourage you guys go into the comments, tell me what you think. Maybe give me uh, go follow me over on Twitter or anywhere any of the other social media platforms that are linked in the uh, description down below. Uh, send me links for articles or whatever that you guys find interesting. I'm always happy to cover stuff. Um, that you guys find interesting. Like I said, go give me a follow over on Twitter because I, I usually kind of use uh, Twitter as a, um, a place to kind of save articles. You know, I'll definitely, I usually retweet some stuff that I think about talking throughout the week. I also retweet more than I actually talk about just because sometimes I gotta, gotta cut stuff just to make the show, uh, stick within, uh, you know, I try and stick to under an hour, but yeah, either way, um, I'm yakking enough. I'm I'm kind of going all over the place. Sorry, I'm all hyped up on Mountain Dew and sleep. That's a weird combination. But <laughs> it's uh, onto our first article, and it, this is kind of like the the title of the show uh, says: Alan Wake has come back to the right hands. Nothing against you, Microsoft. Even though I think you have been making some really bad decisions recently, especially the fact that you will not let Alan Wake to happen. Um, and honestly, now that I, I say it's in, back in the right hands of Remedy doesn't decide to make Alan Wake 2, I could have some egg on my face here. But either way, Alan Wake developer has taken back the rights for the series from Microsoft. So it is official. Remedy has taken back the, um, the rights to Alan Wake. I'm super excited about this. I love Alan Wake. I love, 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 loved Alan Wake. Um... And I'm really hoping this gives us that possibility of that that sequel. I, I I really do hope um, that we're gonna that we're gonna see that. Uh, this article is by Chris Carter. Let's just hop into it. Uh, Alan Wake has been one of the uh, one of those memorable series ever since it exploded on the scene on the Xbox 360 in 2010, serving as one of the most killer Xbox exclusives. The thriller managed to subvert a lot of players' expectations and is now cemented as one of the best games in Remedy's history. So, how are they doing in 2019? Remedy submitted an earnings report earlier today, and things are looking good for the company and for us. As Remedy notes in its report, and I quote, for its, uh, for its first half of year, 
Let me try this one more time. For its first half year period of 2019, Remedy Entertainment PLC records uh, prox- uh, records. Pro- I apologize. One more time. Records approximately 2.5 million euros of royalties from previously released games as one-time income. The royalties are paid to Remedy during the second half-year period of 2019. In relation to this, the publishing rights of Alan Wake Games are um, are reverted to Remedy. The one-time income does not significantly affect Remedy's full-year results because, as previously reported, the company continues to invest in developing new games, the success of which have a greater impact on the company's full-year revenue and, um, and result. And quote, God, that was so difficult to get through. Uh, did you catch it? I highlighted it for you anyways, so you probably can't miss it. Uh, miss it. Remedy now has the rights to the Alan Wake series, meaning they could bring it anywhere in the future, although they have worked heavily with Microsoft in the past, they have ventured into the PC platform and partnered with Rockstar to bring the Max Payne series to the PlayStation platform. The newest game, Control, is also coming to PC, PS4, and Xbox One. We haven't gotten an Alan Wake game since 2012, but that may change sooner or later. Remedy records 2.5 million euros, one-time royalties previous, blah, 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 blah. Um, no, I really do hope this do- this this gives more chance of Alan Wake 2. I have been saying this for the long time. Hell, I said this back when um, Remedy was going to be working on Quantum Break. Uh, Quantum Break was cool. I-, I really enjoyed it. I really do someday hope for a Quantum Break sequel, especially because I feel like the game set up its sequel. Um, although with the next couple stories, that... Quantum Break 2 might not happen. Quantum Break 2 might not happen because of the whole... I'm not sure who owns the rights between Remedy or Microsoft on that one. I'm going to guess it's going to be Microsoft. And you'll see why I think... You know, what's... Uh, why I think that. I mean, this granted, this is old news by now because this stuff came out earlier in the week. But uh, just these next couple articles are fun. Uh, Sony is considering studio acquisitions ahead of the PS5. Article by Matt Perslow of IGN. Sony is considering acquiring more development studios as it gears up for the launch of PS5. Talking to Nikki, I have no idea. Um, translation via Gamatsu, Sony Interactive Entertainment President and CEO Jim Ryan said that, quote, content is more important than ever before, end quote. In order to secure more content, the company is considering the merger and acquisition of game company or of game developers. I mean, this is uh, obviously it's a move to kind of counteract what Microsoft is doing because Microsoft keeps coming out and saying, hey, we've picked up all of these studios. We keep picking up all these studios, picking up all these studios. Well, <laughs> My argument would be, okay, you're picking up all these studios, but I, I, you've been talking about this for like the last two, e, two, three E3s, and I've really not seen the results. I mean, I've seen a few cool games. I mean, obviously we got um, State of Decay 2, but I, <laughs> we didn't get a lot of the, what I really wanted to see out of that, and sadly, um, it, it, sadly for... Um, Xbox, I mean, they picked up some cool studios, but like I said, I, we just we just not seen anything. So I really hope Sony can can pick up these studios and, and do right with them uh, and trying to make more and more and better exclusives. I mean, Sony's right now, it's been killing it with exclusives. I mean, last year alone, I mean, saw what, about three or four big exclusives that did well. So I'm, I'm really hoping Sony can, can really do something cool with this. Uh, more PlayStation exclusive games. Uh, the thoughts, uh, the thought comes to Sony as it observes new company companies enter the industry, such as Google with its Stadia, Stat, its Stadia. I keep trying to say Stadia, Stadia streaming platform. I still don't think that will do well. I still do not think that will work. In all honesty, I do not think it'll work. Uh, but while Sony, no doubt, needs to work. Uh, ever harder to ensure it is competitive, the gaming giant welcomes new players in the space. Quote, companies new to the game industry looking at the market w- uh, with hope is something we definitely welcome, said Ryan. Sony Interactive Entertainment has 25 years of experience in the games industry and has big assets. Should this become more than a com- uh, consideration, it will see Sony acquire more developers for its first-party portfolio, meaning more studios working on PlayStation-exclusive games. Exclusives have long uh, been key to ensuring console success stories, and Sony has arguably seen this more than ever during the uh, this generation's uh, lifespan with PS4 games such as God of War and Uncharted 4. It seems likely that Sony would want to secure more exclusives for upcoming PS5. I mean, come on. what? I mean, yeah, you, God of War and Uncharted 4, but I mean, come on, there's also... Uh, I mean, right here, you're seeing Horizon, Spider-Man. I thought Detroit was fantastic. I mean, hell, Detroit, if, if 
I mean this in all honesty. Look, I'm a, I'm a big uh, Quantic Dreams fan, but um, it, go, uh, I, I believe it is some of the free games for July. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the free uh, PlayStation Plus games in July. Um, originally, I think it was supposed to be Pro Evolution Soccer 2019, but Sony pulled that from their free games and uh, replaced it with uh, Detroit Become Human. Play Detroit Become Human. It is a really good game. It was a lot of fun. Um, I also have a Let's Play up for it, so go check that out too. If you want, you want to give me more views. Um, we don't know much about Sony's next gen plans, uh, but we do know some of the PS5 specs. So check out this. Yeah, okay, all that stuff with specs. Um, no, I, I think I think that's exactly. Uh, this is a, a great move by Sony, um, especially with what we're seeing with the next article. I, I think if Sony does this stuff, Sony can uh, very much do it well because I think my I think Microsoft has a bad habit of sitting on properties that it owns and it's just not doing anything with i.e fable which I, I'm I'm still I'm still waiting to hear whether or not fable 4 or a new fable or whatever is even actually being made I mean we keep hearing rumor after rumor after rumor but nothing solid Microsoft just sits on crap I mean I, I hell I'm surprised we never saw a, 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 a sequel to Sunset Overdrive. And they hold the rights for that. Uh, I believe it was... Uh, oh my god, why can't I think of... Uh, I the uh, Insomniac were, were the developers. Insomniac is, if I remember correctly, has come out and said, yeah, we're up to doing a sequel for Sunset. I mean, I, I, Sunset's awesome. We just... Microsoft owns the rights to it. They don't want... They didn't want to make a sequel. I, I, I do not get what is... Microsoft's problem sometimes I just I, I feel like they they sometimes just uh, sit on properties for no reason I, I do not understand it but either way um moving on the, the reason I'm talking I, I threw that article in where it was and not you know just somewhere else is because of this article Sony is rumored to be preparing a bid to buy Remedy, making Alan Wake 2 or a Control sequel potential PlayStation exclusives. And again, dear God, let this happen. Look, I usually I, I'll comment on rumors, but as all, but I usually try and say, look, it's a rumor until I hear it from the horse's mouth. I'm not going to be coming out and saying it's gospel. But dear God, I'm praying that this is real. I want Alan Wake. I have won Alan Wake 2. For so long, and I am so hoping this happens. Uh, this is an article on uh, this is Games Radar by Zoe Delonte Light. Let's see here. Uh, remember when Shuhei Yoshida, president of Sony's Worldwide Entertainment, i.e., quite a big deal, uh, visited the Remini Studios back in May? Well, that makes a lot of sense now. Uh, if this rumor turns out to be true, as a push square source has claimed that Sony is lining up to bid. Uh, lining up to bid to buy Remedy, potentially adding it to their impressive roster of first-party studios that include Naughty Dog, Gorilla, Media Molecule, Ben Studio, and Sucker Punch, among others. If this uh, turns out to be true, uh, that means that means that I'm going to guess that's a typo. That any as of yet unannounced Alan Wake sequels could be PS4 or PS5 exclusives, as well as any sequels to the upcoming game Control. Specifically, Push Square writes. Give me a second. This is going to bother me if I. Okay. Um, specifically, Push Square writes that it's uh, quote heard from a number of sources that Sony is lining up to bid. Although the company's recent uh, reacquisition of the Alan Wake brand casts some doubt on the speculation, and then clarifies that the likelihood of Sony buying Remedy is. Uh, quote, neutral Remedy Entertainment has maintained its independence over the years and so is unlikely to be particularly open to the idea of an acquisition. We do believe that something is afoot between the Finnish studio and Sony, however, so don't be surprised if it's working on an exclusive for the PS5, end quote. Really, it's a Finnish studio. I didn't know, I honestly didn't know where Remedy was from. Hmm, take the rumor with a pinch of salt, but the fact that Yoshida visited Remedy in May does make these rumors seem plausible to say that very, um, say the very least. Uh, watch this space, folks. Okay, my take on this. Um, they make a good point there that I actually, I, I didn't really think about that, you know, with them picking up the rights to Alan Wake and, you know, just some other stuff and they seem to be doing well, that an out-and-out -out acquisition, yeah, fair enough, does... Mm, 
my, you know, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Although I'd argue, I wouldn't be surprised to see a deal like with what um, Sony has with Insomniac. Insomniac, from everything that I know, isn't directly owned by Sony. They partner with Sony extremely heavily, but they are not owned by Sony. They're more of a second party studio. So it wouldn't surprise me if um, uh, Remedy is going to kind of make its, uh, it, it's going to make kind of like a second party deal with that. It's going to, it's going to basically partner with Sony. It's going to get funding from Sony, but at the end of the day, it's its own independent, <coughs> excuse me, its own independent company. That's, that's, I think what I would say is most likely Though, honestly, I would love to see Remedy brought into the fold in Sony and let them really have the the big budget of the uh, of the monster that is Sony behind uh, a, a fantastic company that comes up with some really out there ideas like Remedy. I, I think it would be a really cool kind of backing. I think Sony would do it right. Microsoft, again, I've lost a lot of faith in what they do, but... Uh, yeah, either way, um, we're gonna move on to some next articles. But real quick, but yeah, you're gonna notice a cut. I, I gotta I gotta grab a bottle of water or something. All right, guys, I'm back. Let's take a look at this next article. This is kind of a little, the next couple. They're they're kind of article pairs based on some rumors that uh, kind of came out and then have kind of been overturned, kind of within the same week. But uh, first things first, let's take a look at something interesting. This is coming out of from Larian Studios. Apparently, there's going to be a follow-up to Divinity Original Sin 2. Does anybody remember? I think it was right before uh, right before E3, we got a look at some uh, something from Larian Studios. Uh, they released that that 3, um, that kind of like that stylized 3, that there was kind of a question. Is it Baldur's Gate 3, or is it going to be Divinity Original Sin 3? See... I was guessing Original Sin 3, but then during the Stadia announcement, or Stadia announcement, god damn it, not Stadia, Stadia announcement, uh, we found out that Baldur's Gate 3 is going to happen. So I, so I stopped thinking anything of a new Divinity game, but apparently it looks like there's going to be another Divinity game. It looks like it's going to change it up a little bit. It's not going to be that straight up RPG like the previous ones, but this new idea is really interesting. So let, let's hop into this article here. on uh, This is uh, Games Radar, I believe. Yes, Games Radar. Uh, Divinity Fallen Heroes is a tactical RPG that blends the world uh, of Divinity Original Sin 2 with the action of XCOM. Article by Edge Staff, uh, as I said, game, uh, by Edge Staff uh, on Games Radar. Uh, look, just off the bat, I really like the idea that they're going to make the, the combat more XCOM-like. Uh, XCOM -like. Um, the combat in Divinity Original Sin is really interesting. It's it's based on movement points and the spells and the, you know, that you can actually, like, put out fire. Like, say, like, a, a chunk of the ground is burning. Well, you can put that out using a rain spell and this, that. The combat in Divinity is really interesting and it's very well done. But I kind of want to see how, what it would be like in that sort of grid-based tactical style of XCOM that has done so well and has had so many imitators. I, I would really like to see what Larian can do with it. So let's, let's take a look here. Uh, Larian studios has been making divinity, has been making divinity RPGs for nearly two decades since, uh, the, um, tautologically titled divinity in 2002 up to its most recent installment, uh, the celebrated Divinity Original Sin 2 with Fallen Heroes, though. It's hoping to fence into tactics games, but as producer uh, Kieran Kelly, I don't know, points out, quote, the crossover of RPG strategy and tactics is actually quite high, uh, end quote. He's talking specifically about the games that Larian's, that Larian's team like to play. Alongside the RPGs you'd expect, he rattles off a list of tactics and strategy games. XCOM, Into the Breach, Darkest Dungeon, Heroes of Might and Magic, but it applies to the building blocks of those genres. Turn-based combat, squad selection, and skill trees are common refrains. They're just turned higher or lower in the mix depending on the genre. Quote, a lot of Divinity Original Sins uh, 2, <laughs> a lot of Original Sin 2's combat, there we go, <laughs> was trying to make it as tactical as possible. Anyway, only in the RPG setting, 
Kelly says. So all we're doing is considering uh, or condensing that into a more refined, tighter experience. End quote. Fallen Heroes is tightly linked to its predecessor in a lot of ways. While over 1,000 years passed between the first and second original Sin games, this story picks up just two years later from one of Original Sin's uh, Original Sin 2's multiple endings. Quote: This game is not Original Sin 3. It's very much a spinoff, but it is using a canon ending of Original Sin 2 and building a story for. From there says Ke- uh, end quote says Kelly. See, uh, f- so from what I'm taking from that is you don't have to play Original Sin two. I would suggest you play Original Sin two. It's really good, but from the way that makes it sound, it's not required. And you would you know it, it's it's maybe you'd understand some more stuff, but you can still hop into it and enjoy it. Again, it's kind of like with um, what was I thinking here? Yeah, kind of like Divinity Original Sin 2. You honestly didn't have to play the first Original Sin game. I mean, again, maybe it would help you understand some stuff, but it's like they said, a thousand years went between those two games, so you could still uh, play one. <coughs> Sorry. Um, no, I really like this idea of, of, again, making it more of a tactical game. I, th- I think, it. I, depending on how it's done, I think it'll work. Uh, under said canon, the magical source has left the world and all of the origins, original Sin 2's term for the pre-rolled characters, uh, who could either be your playable protagonist or members of your wider party, survived the events of the game. The game casts you as uh, the captain of the Lady Vengeance, a flying ship first glimpsed in original Sin 2, staffed with a crew made up of those familiar faces. We get our hands uh, We get our hands on Ifan Loesch, uh, I believe it's Loesch, and Fane, but all six origins will be available to recruit, as well as Malady, who appeared in the last game as an NPC and one as yet unnamed character. On board the ship, you'll have uh, conversations with each character and make decisions that guide the flow of the story. Larian is crafting over 60 missions, but one playthrough will see less than half of those. Depending on the path you choose, this is all very much the stuff of RPGs, although the structure is intended to be a lot more concentrated, offering a half-hour loop of missions and story rather than a lengthy sessions needed to advance the plot uh, of something like Original Sin 2. Okay, uh, just off the just off the start, from what I'm hearing from uh, from what they said right there, makes this sound uh, a lot like a game I'm playing right now called uh, Troubleshooter. If you haven't gone gone see that uh, let's play, it's like 40 parts deep by now. It's actually really getting some um, some traction here on the channel. But from uh, that game is, it sounds very sim- very similar. It's like they're really trying to mix these these XCOM like tactics with a, a very deep RPG system. And, and what I mean by that, it's really trying to make it very hero and character based. Um, nothing against stuff like XCOM, but I mean, your soldiers are really interchangeable other than their other than the class system and the RPG mechanics in there aren't very deep unless you're a guy like Christopher Odd or somebody who will, who will have people like make characters and kind of really grabs and um, I, I get, I, if if go watch a Christopher Odd let's play for um, an XCOM game, you'll see what I mean. He he finds a way to kind of do like a narrative let's play sort of thing uh, with the with that series. Um, but it, stuff like Troubleshooter, it, it doesn't give you just tons and tons of characters to play as. It gives you, it, I think, what I, with Troubleshooter, I finally got I think the sixth team member. Um. And they're all, I call them hero characters. You know, they, they level up their skill trees. There's a, there is a class system, but it's more character specific. It's very heavily based on its own characters. It's very RPG heavy, but it still finds a way to fuse it with that tactical combat of XCOM. I really think this can work, especially from a studio like Larian. Um, let's see here. On board the ship, you'll have conversation. Or what is it? Uh, this is concentrated tactics. On board the ship, you'll have conversations with each character and make decisions that guide the flow of the story. Larian is crafting over sixty missions, but one playthrough. Well, wait, we already read that, didn't we? Well, uh, whatever. Uh, we'll see less than half of those, depending on the path you choose. Uh, are very much RPG stuff. Those missions themselves will be immediately recognizable. It's weird. Uh, to anyone who has played Larian's previous games, characters have the same magic and physical armor uh, protecting their health bar. Each unit has a pool of action points, uh, which, if 
unspent will be carried over to the next round. Levels features various uh, surfaces with environmental effects. Fire can melt ice and water that can uh, be electrified to shock an enemy and so on. In truth, this uh, the version we play could almost be an original Sin 2 mod because that's essentially what it is right now. Okay, that's... I like the fact that... Um, that the environmental system and everything is going to be back. I'm not sure how the action points, though, are going to work in the the more tactical setting like in XCOM. Because, I mean, uh, even what I was talking about with Troubleshooter, it uses um, the basically you have, a, you have a single move option, then attack, or you can attack, you can then... Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think. You, you basically have two actions. You can either sprint and, you know, move using both action points. You can move once... And then perform another action, such as a reload or shoot uh, or an attack or something like that. Um, but the way that this is talking about it, it's going to be more action point based, which I'm interested to see how that's going to work. I'm not sure if it will work, but who knows? Again, Larian, Larian's tactical, the tactical nature of this game from, <coughs> I am sorry, the, the tactical nature of Original Sin is 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 interesting i i'm i'm not sure how it'll work but i'm very curious to see how they're going to do it and i think this team can do it uh that's that's what i'm trying to get at give me a sec <coughs> i'm sorry i tried to lean away from the mic um these are still the early days uh for fallen heroes larian has been working on the game kelly uses the word experimenting quotes for six months together with um Logistic Arts, a Danish developer best known for the historical tactics series Expeditions. It was less than two months ago that Larian played a build uh, Logic had sent over and decided it was going to uh, proceed with the game. Uh, that was the version before the one we're playing, and Kelly repeatedly emphasizes that this is a prototype with a lot less of its a with a lot of its assets borrowed directly from Original Sin 2 and a hacked together UI that's roughly halfway between the game and Expedition's Vikings. This only serves uh, to highlight the aforementioned similarities in the combat system. The difference uh, is that each mission comes with objectives that go beyond win the fight, get back to the story. Uh, one tasks us with destroying three ballista ballisti ballista I'm not entirely sure that are firing on the Lady Vengeance. For example, Original Original Sin 2's D&D style uh, initiative queue has been has also been ditched in favor of the full team turns that are more useful in a tactics game. Uh, let's see here. What goes up must come down. Uh, this is a small change, but one that's intended to open up the, possi the possibility space for combinations and synergy. Larian wants to push interactions between abilities and environments to the forefront even more than in Original Sin 2. Kelly tells us, uh, which is... A, which is a good decision because it's in these interactions that Fallen Heroes really comes alive. The game has added a new elemental surface, the kinetic sulfurium, I hope that's correct, and along with uh, it, a, phys a physics engine. God damn it, I cannot speak today. Um, I mean, something else that I think that, that Larian did uh, that was really cool uh, with, this, with, with this whole surface system that they had in um, Original Sin 2, environmental surface, there we go, um, was blood. That the fact that sometimes you'll be standing in a pool of blood and that can be electrified. It's almost treated the same as water. I, I really like what these games have done with uh, using skills and elements. It, 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 it works in almost a logical way, but in a way that I don't think a lot of games will handle. Um, and again, looking at looking at this menu up here in this picture, again, it, it's you're seeing like the... Um, you, you're seeing fewer characters again this is what's making me think that you're probably only get gonna get like a roster of maybe ten, eight ten characters unlike an XCOM where you can have a, a, a list of 30 I think again I think this is going to be more hero based than it is going to be pure soldier based but I, I again I think this is comparing this more to something like troubleshooter is going to be a lot more apt than comparing it to something like XCOM the combat's going to be very XCOM but it, I think it's going to be a different kind of game I, I think it's going to be interesting 
Uh, when Sulfurium gets hit, anything on top of it will be blasted away, meaning units can be sent tumbling across the level, combined with uh, combine this with character skills, and you get brilliant moments of uh, emergent silliness. You can walk a unit onto Sulfurium, then use Nether Swap to switch places with an enemy, setting them up for a nearby archer to loose a well a well aimed arrow. A metaphor, uh, what a metamorph character, excuse me, can use their ability to grow magical horns, then bull rush a line of units to knock them back onto the surface and trigger an explosion. Uh, because your squad all act simultaneously rather than waiting for their place in the initiative queue, it should be easier to set up and execute these kinds of combos. And there's more room for on-the-fly experimentation because you're building a um, tailored squad for each mission. You can control between four and six units with one hero character plus a handful of ba okay basic units and, once you meet them in the story, named veteran troops with unique power sets. Okay, so maybe an XCOM comparison isn't completely off because there's... okay. I'm saying this sound okay. Now hearing that, it actually sounds more like a halfway point between something like, um, uh, like troubleshooter. Granted, there are there's like the normal police units that you know fight with your hero characters, but even then, those police units aren't. You don't manage them; they're their own thing. You know, they're just like random kind of like and I don't want to say NPCs because you do technically play as them, but they're just generic soldier characters that kind of bolster your numbers against the enemy the, what, the way this is sounding it, it's going to be kind of like you, the normal these guys that they're talking about right there are going to be like your normal troops from XCOM but then they're going to back up the more powerful hero characters but it sounds like you're going to have more customization than a troubleshooter it, this is this is really interesting like I'm seeing I'm hearing aspects of other games that I know and really like, but I'm also hearing some, I, I, but I'm also hearing some new ideas. I, I, I'm really liking this the more and more I go here. You'll likely be forced to explore every combination uh, because, as the title hints, permadeath is one trope of tactics games that Larian has embraced fully. Basic units will regenerate endless, endlessly. Excuse me. There's always another archer or healer, but heroes and veterans can be lost forever. Quote, a lot of your decision-making and choice and character composition will be who do I bring on missions and why, says Kelly. As you lose troops, it's not so much that you lose power so much as options. It's like losing a limb rather than your heart, end quote. Larian is key uh, to avoid the death spiral of games like XCOM, where too many failures mean you should probably abandon a run entirely and start again. Uh, the Divinity Universe does offer a solution to death in its resurrection scrolls, but Larian is still undecided whether these will carry across the fallen heroes. After all, with the source drained from the world, it makes sense that miracles would be in shorter supply. The most likely option, Kelly says, is that the player will have just a couple of chances to resurrect one of the, their fallen heroes to give as much weight to bringing someone back uh, as to losing them. It's a very RPG solution, emphasizing narrative as uh, much as systems and one example of how a, an outsider perspective can bring fresh approaches. As fallen heroes continues to grow away from its roots, it's kind of cross-pollination that should help Larian and Divinity find its own space between two well-established uh, well genres. No, I think that's uh, that's uh, the end is, is exactly right. I think this the way this is sounding is it's going to be it's there there is I'm trying to think how I want to put this. It sounds it, it doesn't sound just like a, a like a simple mix between Divinity and XCOM. It sounds like it's really it's taking those ideas and going in its own direction with it. I really like the idea, um, and I and I really can't wait uh, to hear more about this game. Hopefully, we'll uh, hear about it more in the near future. <coughs> Excuse me. Moving on, we got another article by Zoe Delante Light. Uh, apparently, there were some GTA Six leaks um, that came out. Uh, Earlier this week, uh, according to the next article we're going to be reading, don't get a lot, of, don't get your hopes up too much though. But uh, let's take a look here. Uh, the GTA Six leak. Uh, this GTA Six leak is no joke. Posted on Reddit uh, on Reddit user Jackalantern1982. This is on Games Radar, by the way. 
uh, has posted a lengthy bullet point list about what is apparently included in the next Grand Theft Auto game, including the fact that it's set across multiple decades, deals with the rise of a drug cartel, and is set uh, partially or excuse me, partly in Vice City, you can read the entire list of alleged information about GTA 6 below, but there's plenty more uh, to this leak than just one Reddit post, as other leaks have popped up corroborating uh, the points in Jack O'Lantern's in Jack, Jack 1982. One more time, Jack O'Lantern 1982's post, there we go, uh, like this one from Reddit user GFK53. Here's the entire suit of information edited for clarity. You can. Uh, there will be links to these articles down in the description, so you can go and follow all these hyperlinks. Um, just if we spent all our time reading these Reddit posts, it would just take for freaking ever. Um, the next GTA title has been in development since two, since 2012, but production didn't begin properly until 2015. But even then, the team was focusing more on Red Dead 2. Um, it's another Rockstar Worldwide production. Code name is Project America, set in both Vice City and a new fictional location based on Rio de Janeiro. Some li linear missions take place in Liberty City, but it isn't an open world. Think uh, Ludendorff in GTA uh, 5. Game will balance realism and arcade, and it won't be as realistic as Red Dead Redemption 2. One playable protagonist, male, not female, despite supposed leaks, set in, 1970, uh, set in the 1970s and 80s. You play as an up-and-coming drug lord wannabe named Ricardo. Another key character uh, called Casey is a part of the narrative. You start off as a grunt doing runs as a cocaine smuggler from Vice City to the new large South American area before making uh, connections with big-time drug lords and making your way up multiple cities. There will also be a giant prison, which will uh, play a part in the game. will feature a chapter system similar to a Tarantino flick or Red Dead Redemption 2. Weather is heavily... What, weather is a heavy focus, hurricanes, floods, etc. Buildings change over the air as vehicles too. Some older, rare classic cars get more expensive as time progresses, etc. Full economy, heavily inspi inspired by Netflix's Narcos. Uh, they want to have an incredible 70s and 80s soundtrack. A younger, Mart uh, a younger Martin Madrazo will make an appearance, as will his father, who is a big drug lord at the time. You do some missions for the Madrazo family, uh, involving hits and other gangs. Okay, real, oh, okay, let's, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, time out, just saw, this isn't just me sitting here and reading this entire thing, but I'm trying to keep this moving here, because there's a lot of bullet points. I love this idea. Look, there, it, obviously the next article is, is going to be uh, the PC Gamer article because PC Gamer has come out, I think, twice this week saying, look, this is probably not real, that this is probably, this is, this is, this is probably fake. Whether it is or isn't, this is a really good idea. I would, I, I mean, look, maybe some of these ideas are a little too far-fetched. I mean, like the idea of, you know, like, uh, like classic cars getting more expensive as time progresses, you know, the buildings being able to exactly change and all this is a cool idea, but I'm not entirely sure that how feasible it is, but I really like this idea of the 70s, 80s sort of um, setting, a South American game uh, where basically you do rise up as a, as a drug kingpin. I love that idea. It doesn't necessarily fit Grand Theft Auto. I would say kind of. Uh, it, it's like I said, it's a cool idea, especially bringing in uh, Madrazo, who was a big, who was a big character um, in pushing Michael Franklin and Trevor all kind of together in uh, GTA V. I think that's a that's a cool idea. That's a cool crossover. Granted, though, we have to remember the big thing with Grand Theft Auto has always been its connection to. Uh, when I say American, the U.S. is pop culture. It's always kind of been a, it's it's been a British is it's been a British perspective on or an English perspective, whatever, an English perspective on um, American society. It, or it's it, it's um satiristic. There we go. It's it, it's a, it's a satire look at American culture from an outsider's perspective. That's always kind of what's been so cool about Grand Theft Auto. So maybe setting it in South America would maybe take something away from it. Again, I'm I'm treating this analysis is treating this specific article like if if it was like if it was real. Again, I know it's a rumor, it's whatever. What I'm saying right there is maybe is saying, look, if this is real, that it might pull something away. That is kind of kind of sad to me. Although again, I still really like the idea. And if any company is going to pull it off, it would be Rockstar. Um, drug Empire Building is a mechanic similar to Vice City Stories, but bigger than, uh, think the GTA Online system and dial it up to 10. 
You can only have weapons on your person, no arsenal in your back pocket like Red Dead Redemption 2. Really? You'd argue Red Dead Redemption 2 is arsenal in your back pocket? Actually, I kind of like the fact that you have to kind of like equip your long guns before uh, at your horse or pick which pistols you want to carry. I actually really liked Red Dead Redemption 2's weapon system. How it wasn't like that invisible backpack of weapons like Grand Theft Auto. You actually had used your horse as your roving arsenal. I thought that was really cool. I thought that worked. Um... Your personal vehicle will be like your horse saddle in Red Dead Redemption 2. All your equipment is stored in the trunk. You also store your body armor in the car. If you wear it, it appears no longer just an invisible thing. Again, I like these I, I like these ideas. Although, I, get, I think that Red Dead Redemption 2 thing is incorrect. Because then you talk about how the horse saddle. Like, your horse saddle was your... It was it was your... Uh, un, unless the trunk can only hold, store so many weapons. I, I don't know. Uh, there will be tons of subtle reading, think Max Payne 3 amounts, very immersive, like watching an episode of Narcos, whether you're in South America, don't expect to hear much English, uh, or whenever you're in South America, don't expect to hear much English, Vice City, however, is a mix of everything, but mostly English. Last bit of narrative info, it will discuss topics such as HIV and the immigration crisis of the time, a fictional version of Fidel Castro, etc. Next gen only, not PS4 or Xbox One. PS5 Project Scarlet GTA 6 is now their primary focus alongside another tor- uh, alongside another title uh, which might be Bully 2. Dear God, I want Bully 2 to be a real thing. Uh, game is still in pre-alpha, so names, locations, details could all pro- uh, probably uh, could and probably will change. There we go. No ETA on release. <clears throat> Other details about the game from. Uh, Fireden edited for clarity below. The game is set in Liberty City modern day. The plot uh, in the beginning of the game is reminiscent of The Wire. Police officers are trying to crack down on a gang slash drug ring based around a nightclub. There are four main characters, two police and two gang members. Uh, The plot then twists and turns and goes to upstate New York where it becomes more crime noir. Think Ozark and Breaking Bad. It will have twice the amount of dialogue as GTA 5 and a really crazy plot twist. The main storyline splits after... A while, the criminal side has a sort of a sandbox, build a crime empire thing, Fallout 4 meets The Sims, while the police side is more of a traditional action game with a little twist of L.A. Noir. Earliest release is holiday 2021, but I would guess later 2022 or 2023. Well, there you have it, a truckload of GTA uh, GTA 6 leaks. Well, uh, we'll have to see if there's any truth in these claims, but until then, just sit tight and be prepared. Um, all that as the 2022-2023 release is uh, prepared to be patient as if that release date was accurate. Uh, we're due for almost four years of waiting. Dang it. Um, now, how how true any of this is? Again, we'll get in, in, into the into the other article next. But I like the idea of the game. I will say that. I do I do like the idea of this game. Um, although these two, the, like they said, they kind of split this, this guy's idea for the leaks. If, if it's going to, these sound almost like two completely different games. Like if you're going to have the modern one in Liberty City, and and this game in South America. I mean, this I feel like if both of those were in one game, it would be way too big. I would almost see them to be here's the first game, here's the sequel. But either way, both of these games sound really cool, and I really do hope they're real. I really, really really hope that these are real or if not this somebody will read these and go oh these are real this is a really cool idea let's do that all right up next uh as i as i said in the last video uh there was some arguments uh by pc gamer saying that yeah these rumors no almost certainly fake article fraser brown pc gamer uh again i i i'm not sure which one this was if this was the second one or the first one because i saw i saw uh, uh, waves of articles early in the week about the GTA 6 thing, and then PC gamers say, no, it's not real. And then again, I saw it again later in the week, and again, PC gamers say, no, it's not real. Although they did, I think the tweet was, it's almost as real as this picture of <laughs> someone riding a dragon in GTA 5. That was really funny. Um, an alleged... <laughs> Sorry. Article reads, an alleged GTA 6 leak appeared on Reddit on the weekend, um, over the weekend, whatever. And while it is quite detailed, it's probably bogus. Definitely, 
but as filled with probable nonsense as it is, it is tantalizing all the same. We'll visit Vice City again, apparently, and South America, and we'll even get to visit Cuba, and it will span decades. With places changing as the years roll by, we'll be able to build our very own drug empire, too, invoking the criminal... Um, Un the criminally underrated Chinatown Wars. There we go. Narcos is an inspiration. Sounds interesting, but it's fake. Sorry. Reddit user Jack O'Lantern 1982 is apparently getting their information from people who have worked at PC Gamer and Kotaku. It's news to us. The leak was followed up by another one, this time from GFK53, who appeared, uh, who apparently has an, quote, inside source. Some of the details are the same. Others are different. Quote, rather, weather is being uh, modeling sick to create category four to five hurricanes for GFK 53, despite being set in a part of the world that has just one kind of weather. GTA 5 actually had quite a bit of variety, but none of it act really affected the world. Hurricanes getting in the way of a criminal caper sound pretty neat. Maybe Rockstar will be inspired. Other unveiled details include... Um, that it will only have a single protagonist and that it won't uh, be available for this generation consoles, which seems even more unlikely than most of the stuff in the list, especially since Rockstar, according to the leak, started developing it in 2012. Take all of this with a massive truck of salt. GTA 6 is almost certainly coming, but if it bears a resemblance to the stuff in those Reddit posts, it will probably be down to luck. I reached out to Rockstar, but have yet to hear back. Cheers, Games Radar. Um... I don't know why they said... Oh, because Games Radar is yeah, where a lot of the leaks uh, were coming out. Um, no, I, I feel like some of their some of their arguments against that, again, it's like, you know, Category 4 to 5 hurricanes. Well, but this part of the world only has one kind of weather or whatever. I don't know. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm going to still hold out hopes that this is real because I think this is a really cool idea. Um but no, I mean, even, even though, again, that that reasoning against the weather of why, well, the weather bit's fake because, sure, but no, I, I think I think PC Gamer is correct that this is almost most certainly fake, even without evidence. I think you can guess, yeah, it's probably fake. Uh, Rockstar is a company that, if you ask me, doesn't leak a whole hell of a lot, or it's not going to leak something this detailed, or at least I can't think of anything that leaked. I can't think of any... Of any um, true leaks from Rockstar that have been this detailed and this correct. I, I highly doubt that this is true, but again, dear God, I hope this is true. I just kind of wanted to go over those leaks. And again, uh, I kind of wanted to go over both sides of it, uh, with you guys. So, all right, moving on to actually another rumor that we had, um, like click out of that. I know another rumor that we had, um, this week is, uh, oh, you thought CD Projekt Red was only working on one cyberpunk game. Article by Brett um, Makadonsky of, <coughs> excuse me, Destructoid. Anyone who's looking forward to Cyberpunk 2077 will probably be elated to know that there's a lot more cyberpunk on the horizon. CD Projekt Red is working on not one, not two, but three cyberpunk games at the same time. As reported by Polish outlet uh, Bankier, CD Projekt Red President Adam uh, uh, Kaczynski, hopefully that's correct, I could be totally off, uh, confirmed during the conference this morning that the developer has three teams working on individual cyberpunk projects. One is uh, the game that has been eagerly awaited for years now. The second is a standalone multiplayer title that may launch close to Cyberpunk 2077. The third is probably the most intriguing Although the cart is was although the cart is in front of the horse here, considering that Cyberpunk 2077 is still nine months out, CD Projekt Red says its next major unannounced AAA title is in the Cyberpunk universe, and that it's quote a really big and innovative project. End quote. This will likely release in 2021. <coughs> Excuse me. This news is both surprising and unsurprising uh, all at once. Cyberpunk is too attractive of a property for a video game one-off. It's uh, smart to leverage some of the foundation of Cyberpunk 2077 to use in other games, but three at the same time, that's above and beyond. Well, I mean, if there's any studio that could pull it off, it would either be Rockstar or CD Projekt. But, but sadly, Destructoid, I think they got a little ahead of their skis here because PC Gamer sweeping in again <laughs> to dissuade rumors says this is bullshit uh cd project red well actually they just said no cd project red has come out and confirmed that it's not working on multiple projects sorry guys article andy chalk pc gamer uh cd project red said god 
damn it, everyone is just slamming their pages with ads. I get it. They're they're trying to keep up and make money, but Jesus Christ. Uh, CD Projekt Red says that despite uh, what you may have read today on the internet, it is not currently working on multiple cyberpunk games. The report emerged from Polar, a Polish site Bankier PL, which quoted CD Projekt President Adam Kaczynski as saying, quote, we're working on three cyberpunk things over the main game and over two, and over two more, end quote. But the quote uh, came via Google Translate, and as you can see, things were a little bit mangled coming out on the other end, which led to the confusion. You know, and also when I was saying the PC gamer coming out and saying bullshit again, being a little hyperbolic there, it's like they said. I, th I do not think that the again, it's like that said. I don't think that this is people trying to be malicious and misrepresent. No, I think people just I, again, I think it's a misunderstanding. But uh, quote: We currently have a total of five teams working on a number of projects, with three focusing on the development of Cyberpunk 2077. These include CD Projekt Red, Warsaw, and Krakow, uh, who are handling the main game, as well as the Roclaw Studio, where about around 40 industry specialists are engaged in technology R&D. End quote. A CD Projekt rep said in an email, quote, a separate dedicated team at the Warsaw studio is handling development of Gwent, the final team in uh, Spoko, uh, hopefully that's correct, uh, which is currently working on a yet unannounced mobile project, end quote. CD Projekt uh, has also previously expressed an interest in major Witcher 3 style expansions for CD Projekt, uh, or for Cyberpunk 2077, sorry, which will uh, presumably extend the overall development effort of the game further out. So while a Cyberpunk sequel is virtually assured, reports that the wheels are already turning on it appear to be off base. Cyberpunk 2077 comes out on April 16th, 2020. First hit single chip in is out now. Oh, yeah, the first hit, uh, yeah, the first hit single, um... What that's about is CD Projekt has apparently gotten a, um, oh my god, why can't I, uh, like a Polish, or are they Polish or Swedish? I can't remember. A, a European punk band uh, to act as the in-game, um, I believe they're called Samurai. I, I believe that's the name of the, the band. You, you've seen posters for them uh, around some of the bits of, um, of, the the gameplay footage that we've seen they're a, they're a band in cyberpunk's world so they teamed up with a with a Pol with a swedish or polish or again european punk band to make the music for this band and uh, apparently they already put out their sing their single i haven't listened to it yet though so hmm. could be interesting uh so there we go yeah i'm i'm not surprised to hear that i i, I when i first heard that cd project red was working on three cyberpunk games i'm like that sounds very odd for this studio that they would, that they'd split their focus this much, especially with how anticipated Cyberpunk is, how long they've been teasing it and showing it to us and all that. So, I have, I have no doubt that this, that yeah, this is clearly what they meant. That yeah, we just have multiple studios working on this project in different aspects of this project. It's not three separate things. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. So, all right, we're gonna move on to the final thing. Uh, uh just a real a short trailer. Um, and then we will, uh, we'll close out. All right, on to our, our final bit of news here. Um, th this is a trailer for uh, Don't Even Think. This was sent to me over on Twitter uh, by Chris Eternal. Again, thanks, dude, for the uh, for the heads up here. Um, I, I looked a little into it, just basically the basic idea of this game. As far as I know, it is a PvP survival game. It's asymmetric, all this. Um, just the from already what I've sounded, it sounds kind of like stuff like Evolve. Um, or maybe even the Friday the 13th game. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, it sounds like an interesting idea. Let's uh, let's take a look at the trailer. Again, I have not seen this trailer. Uh, I kind of I, I always kind of like to come into videos, uh, articles and videos, kind of having the general concept, but I like kind of coming in blind so you guys kind of get my initial takes. So let's check this out.
Okay. Um, a free-to-play game, don't even think, coming out 7-10-2019. That's, uh, I believe, in two days. Um, interesting look. I don't 100% know what we're seeing here. I've not really heard anything about this game either. It kind of looked like... Um, uh, like I'm seeing like the same company name on these these guys' jackets, so I'm gonna guess that there's some they're hunting this this werewolf guy for some. Maybe he's like an escaped test experiment or something. I again, it looks like it's going to be like a like a player versus team sort of thing again, kind of like the Friday the Thirteenth game, kind of like Evolve. Um, interesting idea. I'm I kind of want to see more about it. Uh, anybody who who plays it, uh, send me what you guys think about it on Twitter. Um, not, I might not, I'm probably not going to play it. Not, this isn't kind of my, this is, okay, let me try this again. This isn't my kind of thing. I'm not a big PVP guy, but, uh, the, the idea of the game interests me. I don't know. Tell, uh, people down in the, uh, down in the comments over on Twitter, whatever. Tell me what, uh, what you guys think about it when it comes out. But, uh, either way, there you go, guys. That, uh, that was today's show. Sorry if I seem like I'm stumbling or if I'm whatever. Again, um, crazy shit's been going on in my life, uh, or, you know, crazy shit, it's, it's a new job, I guess it's normal stuff, but, I don't know, it's weird to me, this is my first, like, 9 to 5 job, I guess it's 8 to 4, but whatever, this is my, this is my first, like, you know, like, 9 to 5 job, so it's kind of, it's kind of weird to me. Either way, uh, we're going to close here, and uh, I want to say, as always, thank you so much for watching, guys. Facebook, Twitter, the website, Minds.com, links, all that stuff is down in the description below, along with links to all the articles and videos that we talked about in this show. Uh, like, comment, you're not already, please subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more next time, and I will see you guys next week with another uh, another show. So, thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, my name is AJ Kell, this is the Game Channel, I'm out.